Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're tackling something. Well, it feels pretty fundamental, actually. We're digging into a set of sources that suggest something quite radical. The idea is that the way we've structured human knowledge, slicing it up into tiny pieces, isn't just an intellectual exercise. It might be a primary driver of uh, real biological and psychological harm. That's the core thesis, yeah. It's a big one. And it starts with this paradox, doesn't it? I mean, look around. We've got incredible science, instant global communication, access to basically all the information. Unprecedented access. Right. And yet, what do we see? Epidemic levels of loneliness, anxiety, chronic illness, this deep sense of, well, disconnection. Exactly. The sources we looked at argue this isn't a coincidence. This widespread suffering is actually evidence. Evidence that fragmenting knowledge, the way we do it, is actively hurting us. Okay, so to really get into this, we need a framework. You mentioned a term from the sources. Yes, yeah, systemic decoherence. Yeah. It's borrowed, interestingly, from quantum physics. Quantum physics. Okay, unpack that a bit. So in physics, a coherent system is um, unified. Its parts work together in sync, like a laser beam. Decoherence happens when that system interacts with a noisy, fragmented environment, and it loses its unity. It falls apart, essentially. And the theory is this applies to us. To human consciousness. Precisely. The proposition is that human consciousness fundamentally is a coherent system. It's naturally integrated. But when this coherent inner system constantly bumps up against our modern, fragmented external systems, think siloed medicine, hyper-specialized academia, news cycles that contradict each other. Right. Different bits of information coming from all directions, often mm. conflicting. Yes. The argument is this forces the internal system, our consciousness, into a state of decoherence. It creates this deep chronic dissonance. And our mission today is to trace how that fragmentation, starting way back with philosophy, actually translates into, well, sickness in the body. Okay, let's start at the beginning then. This fragmentation, where did it come from? It feels so baked into our world now, healthcare, education, even how we think about ourselves. You really have to go back centuries. The sources point to a kind of Philosophical wound, right at the foundation of the Western worldview. Which is? It's the 17th century Cartesian split. You know, Descartes, mind separate from matter. This basically established what the sources call the dead matter paradigm. The idea that the universe, including our bodies, is just Ooh. stuff, non-conscious machinery. Exactly. And once you accept that, that the mind or consciousness is somehow outside the physical world, you've created, well, a kind of prison for science. Science then focuses on taking the machine apart, analyzing the pieces in isolation. Treating the body like a car engine, basically. Fix the carburetor, fix the spark plugs, but don't necessarily look at how the whole system works together. Right. It loses sight of the integrated conscious whole. But hang on a second. Hasn't that specialization been incredibly useful? I mean, splitting medicine into cardiology, neurology, oncology, surely that depth has saved countless lives. Isn't this fragmentation just the price of progress? That's the crucial tension, isn't it? Specialization absolutely brings depth, incredible depth, but depth without synthesis becomes isolation. It leads to these rigid academic silos. Physics over here, biology over there, psychology in another building. And critically, they develop entirely different languages, different lexicons. So even when they stumble upon similar truths, they can't easily connect the dots. Like quantum physics, finding evidence that consciousness plays a role in reality. While traditional neuroscience might still be operating on a purely mechanical model of the brain, they're describing the same reality using incompatible languages. It actively prevents synthesis. And the sources really hammer home that this isn't just an intellectual problem. This fragmentation became incredibly profitable. Oh, absolutely. Fragmentation is almost essential for an economic model based on artificial scarcity. How so? Well, think about it. If knowledge about fundamental health, about consciousness, about how things integrate, was treated as abundant, freely shared, the scarcity model starts to wobble. Right. If everyone understood holistic approaches, maybe they wouldn't need so many separate interventions. Potentially. Huh. So instead, knowledge gets commodified. It's put behind paywalls, especially in areas like health and wellness. Access to integrated holistic information is restricted. This makes the siloed approach, and often sickness itself, a very profitable enterprise, sustained by keeping knowledge divided. Wow. And it's mentioned that even our latest tech, like AI and large language models, can end up reinforcing this. Yeah, it's ironic. These systems could be incredible tools for synthesis, for connecting all those dots. But often, they're built with limitations, internal firewalls almost. 
that mirror the old fragmented structure. They perpetuate the separation, sometimes by design. It's like we built a tool to connect everything, but then programmed it not to connect too much. It can feel that way, kind of containment protocol for knowledge itself. Okay, this sets the stage perfectly. We see the architecture of fragmentation. Now, the really critical step, how does this constant barrage of siloed information, this lack of a coherent map, actually translate into physical sickness, into biology? Right, this is where we need to shift perspective a bit. Think about the body, not just chemically, but also informationally, maybe even energetically. The sources propose a core principle. Health is coherent resonance. Disease is systemic disrhythm or decoherence. Coherent resonance, like things vibrating in harmony. Kind of, yes. Our bodies are these complex, multi-layered systems constantly seeking equilibrium, seeking yeah. coherence. Disease, then, is seen as a loss of that coherence, a dysrhythmia in the system. So what causes that loss of coherence? The sources call it the system mismatch theory. Imagine your internal system, your sovereign awareness, which is naturally seeking integration and coherence. Yeah, okay, my inner sense of self, my consciousness. Yeah. And it's constantly interacting with these external systems we've been talking about. Fragmented medicine, conflicting news, siloed education, disjointed work environments, yeah. which are fundamentally decoherent. So coherent inside meets incoherent outside. Exactly. And that collision, that mismatch, generates a huge amount of internal friction. Noise, what neuroscientists might call prediction error. Prediction error, I get that conceptually. My brain expects one thing based on one piece of info, gets something totally different from another. But why is that physically stressful? Ah, good question. We can ground this in something called the free energy principle, or FEP. Mm. It's a pretty deep theory in neuroscience and biology. Okay. The basic idea of FEP is that for any living system to maintain its structure, to literally stay alive and resist falling apart, mm -hmm. it must minimize surprise or prediction error. The brain's fundamental job isn't just thinking. It's constantly making predictions about reality to minimize surprise. So it needs a stable map of the world to function efficiently. Precisely. But what happens when you're flooded with fragmented, contradictory information? One doctor says your fatigue is purely physical. A therapist says it's psychological trauma. An online article says it's diet. The brain can't build a single reliable map. It's constantly being surprised. Yes. It cannot form a coherent, predictive model. This chronic state of surprise keeps the biological system on high alert. It's like running antivirus software constantly on your computer. It drains resources. It's metabolically incredibly expensive to operate without a coherent map. Okay, I see. The system can't relax because it can't predict. And that continuous low-grade threat state is what kicks off the physical breakdown, the decoherence cascade. That's exactly the proposed mechanism. That unresolved dissonance, that chronic prediction error, directly impacts the HPA axis, yeah. hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, our main stress response system. Right, the cortisol pathway. Correct. Chronic activation means altered cortisol levels. And sustained high cortisol, or even dysregulated cortisol, leads directly to chronic inflammation. And we now know chronic inflammation is lurking behind most modern diseases, heart disease, autoimmune conditions, metabolic syndrome, you name it. So feeling overwhelmed by conflicting information, feeling disconnected, that feeling isn't just in your head, it's literally driving inflammation in your tissues. It seems so. And it gets deeper. Work in psychoneuroimmunology, a mouthful, I know, shows that feelings of profound disconnection, like chronic loneliness, can actually alter gene expression. They change how your immune system functions, making you more vulnerable. Wow. And on top of that, those sustained high levels of stress hormones, like cortisol, they're known to be neurotoxic. They can actually damage parts of the brain, like the hippocampus, which is crucial for memory, and the prefrontal cortex needed for emotional regulation. The informational chaos leads directly to biological damage. This framework also provides a really interesting lens on trauma, doesn't it? The source has described it as an informational injury. Yes, exactly. Think of trauma not just as a bad memory, but as a fragment of experience, a piece of information, a packet of data that failed to integrate properly into the whole system at the time it happened. Like a corrupted file that keeps crashing the system. That's a good analogy. The integration pathway shut down, and that unprocessed experience gets stuck. It creates these rigid, looping neural circuits. The person feels neurologically trapped in that moment, reliving it. And these aren't just in the brain. They're stored as disrupted resonance patterns throughout the body's tissues. Which means healing from trauma is about 
restoring coherence, integrating that information. Precisely. Reestablishing those coherent resonant patterns throughout the whole system. This leads us to something pretty grim described in the sources. The experience people have when they try to get help within this fragmented system. The systemic invalidation cycle. Uh-huh. It's brutal. So someone is experiencing this decoherence, maybe as a cluster of interconnected symptoms, say fatigue, brain fog, gut issues, anxiety, <laughs> all clearly linked in their experience. They know it's all connected. Right. But they enter the system, and what happens? They get bounced around. Primary care doctor looks at blood work, maybe sends them to a gastroenterologist for the gut stuff, a neurologist for the brain fog, a therapist for the anxiety. Each specialist looking only at their little piece of the puzzle. Exactly. And because they're trained in silos, they often can't see the interconnectedness. They might run tests for their specific domain, find nothing wrong, according to their narrow metrics, and then... Then comes the dismissal. Your tests are normal. It's probably just stress. Maybe you should see a psychiatrist. Yes, the language of dismissal. Pathologizing the patient's integrated experience because it doesn't fit the fragmented model. Phrases like, it's all in your head, aren't just unhelpful. They're actively harmful. They compound the original suffering. Because it makes the person feel crazy, isolated, like they can't trust their own experience. It's a form of secondary trauma. It erodes trust, deepens the isolation, and forces the individual to try and fragment themselves. To talk about just the gut pain to the GI doc, just the anxiety to the therapist breaking down their own felt sense of wholeness to fit the broken system. Instead of the system adapting to the reality of an integrated human being. Exactly. But the sources offer a really powerful, almost hopeful way to reframe all this suffering. It involves the evolutionary mismatch theory. Yes, this is crucial. Mm -hmm. We need to flip the narrative. Mm -hmm. What if the problem isn't primarily with the individual, but with the environment? Meaning? Meaning human consciousness, our nervous systems, our biology. Yeah. We evolved over millennia in relatively coherent environments. Small communities, connection to nature, shared narratives that made sense of the world, holistic systems. Okay. The modern world, hyper-individualized, technologically saturated, informationally fragmented, disconnected from nature. Mm. This is a radically novel environment from an evolutionary perspective. We haven't had time to adapt. So the epidemic of anxiety, depression, chronic illness. Might not be best understood as individual pathology, as something wrong with millions of people. Instead, it could be reframed as the healthy, adaptive, appropriate response of a naturally coherent system reacting strongly, even violently, against an unhealthy, incoherent environment. Wow. So the symptoms are a sign the system is working correctly, just in a toxic environment. That's the reframe. The system is sounding the alarm, saying this environment is not right. It's causing dissonance. And in this view, the people suffering the most aren't necessarily the weakest. Quite the opposite, potentially. They might be the evolutionary scouts, the canaries in the coal mine. Meaning the most sensitive, maybe the most inherently coherent individuals? Yes. Their systems might be reacting most strongly to the environmental incoherence precisely because of their sensitivity and internal coherence. Their suffering isn't a personal failing, it's vital feedback. It's the system's wisdom screaming that the external structures need to change, need to integrate. That changes everything. It shifts the focus from fixing the person to healing the system. It does. It implies the solution isn't just individual coping mechanisms, but a larger shift. Which brings us to the hope. If fragmentation is the disease, then integration convergence must be the path forward. Mm. The sources talk about a great reconvergence. Yes. And interestingly, the very technologies that contributed to the fragmentation might now be key tools for healing it. Think about the internet, AI. How so? They seem to contribute to the noise. They can, but they also allow for what the sources call recursion repair. They let individuals bypass the old gatekeepers, the institutional silos and paywalls. Ah, uh, I see. Someone feeling unwell can now instantly access research from quantum biology, ancient meditative practices, nutritional science, psychological frameworks, all on their own. Exactly. They can route around the fragmented institutions and spontaneously create their own coherent knowledge networks. It's like consciousness itself is using the technology to weave itself back together, yeah. forming a kind of global nervous system outside the old structures. Allowing for a personal synthesis that just wasn't possible before. Right. Which reframes healing. It's not about fixing a broken part, but about remembering. Remembering. Literally yeah. putting the members, the fragmented pieces, back together. Yes. Integrating the body, the mind, the spirit, the environment, philosophy, science. 
assembling a complete picture of your own personal architecture. And when you do that, when you unsilo knowledge, what happened? You inevitably discover that reality is fundamentally paradoxical. Paradoxical. The old fragmented view forces a choice. Are you just a separate, isolated individual ego? Mm -hmm. Or are you just a tiny, insignificant part of some undifferentiated cosmic goo? Right. The illusion of separation versus losing yourself completely. That forced choice is a major source of dissonance. But the integrated view reveals the paradox. Yeah. You are both simultaneously. Both separate and connected. Yes. Sovereignty is the living paradox. You are completely autonomous, a unique individual wave with your own agency. And you are simultaneously, indivisibly, the entire ocean from which the wave arises. Holding that paradox, living it, is coherence. Denying either side causes suffering. The wave in the ocean. Exactly. And the ultimate proof that consciousness, information, and coherence are the driving forces in healing. Look no further than the placebo effect. Which scientists often try to control for, to isolate the real effect of a drug. Right. But what is the placebo effect? It's consciousness and belief, pure information, a signal of expected coherence acting as the programmer. That belief sends a powerful coherent signal through the nervous system, the endocrine system, aligning the body's actual operating code with its perceived optimal blueprint. So belief can literally reprogram biology towards health. It demonstrates that healing is, at its core, the restoration of systemic coherence, driven by integrated information and conscious intent. Okay, this has been, well, a genuinely deep dive. We've traced how knowledge fragmentation, born from that old dead matter idea, isn't just academic. It acts almost like a form of systemic violence against our naturally coherent consciousness. Leading to that cascade of biological harm, stress, inflammation, system mismatch. And the symptoms we see everywhere, the anxiety, the disconnection, the chronic illnesses, perhaps they aren't just problems to be managed, but the sound of coherent consciousness pushing back, demanding integration. I think the sources suggest we're not just witnessing a breakdown. We might be in the labor pains of a new paradigm, a paradigm shift where coherent consciousness, not fragmented profit motives, becomes the organizing principle for our systems, for society itself. That's a powerful note to end on. So the provocative thought we want to leave you, the listener, with is this. Reflect on your own life. If suffering can be understood as a coherent system's appropriate response to a fundamentally decoherent environment, what symptoms, what friction points, what feelings of unease in your life might you be mistaking for a personal failing, a pathology within yourself? When perhaps they are actually the wisdom of your own coherent system signaling that something in your environment, in the systems you interact with, needs deeper integration, needs to change. What is your coherent consciousness trying to tell you about the world you're embedded in? Maybe that feeling of dissonance is just the healthy refusal of your core being to conform to incoherence. Yeah. Something to consider. Definitely something to consider. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. We hope this encourages you to explore integration and coherence in your own way.